All right, welcome to our scene on the aminoglycosides, represented by this mean guy who glides. The mean guy who glides for aminoglycosides. And his sons over here are going to remind us of the different types of aminoglycosides. And you might note that they each have mice with them, because they like mice. But for our purposes, it helps remember that the aminoglycoside types have mice in, in their names. Let's talk about that. So over here we see this guy who likes to have a strap on his head. He likes to have a strap on his head with the mice on it. Strap with mice for streptomycin. Here we have this one with the Amish beard. He's Amish for amicacin. Then we have this one. He's quite a gentleman. You can see he's quite a gentleman. And he likes mice also for gentamycin. This one likes to have a cobra around his neck. We'll call it a tobra. And he also likes mice for tobramycin. And finally this one who looks like Neo for neomycin. So because these are the aminoglycosides, we'll have these guys gliding over here. And as they kill things in their path, they're going to remind us of the mechanism and the clinical use of aminoglycosides. So the first thing we note is that they're killing these bacteria over here. And this reminds us that aminoglycosides are bactericidal. They cause bacterial cell death. Oh, but then they get stopped. And they get attached to them, the 30S. And it gets stuck to them. This reminds us that the aminoglycosides cause irreversible inhibition of the initiation complex through the through binding of the 30S subunit. They can cause misreading of the mRNA, thus inhibiting bacterial protein synthesis. The train exploding on top of them is to help us remember that they also block translocation. Wait a second, what's that? Yeah, that's right. He likes his oxygen mask. This helps us remember that the aminoglycosides require oxygen for uptake into the bacterial cell. And that's why the aminoglycosides are ineffective against anaerobes, which do not require oxygen. Wait a second, these guys are supposed to be gliding. Let's, let's have them gliding again. And we'll note that they're each exploding these gram-negative rods, right? They're red because gram-negative stains red in gram staining due to the thin peptidoglycan glycan wall. And this reminds us that the aminoglycosides are effective against gram-negative rods, such as E. coli, Klebsiella, Serratia, Enterobacter, Proteus mirabilis, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. We'll have Neo here with a knife by the bowels to help us remember that neomycin is given for bowel surgery specifically. Let's talk about some adverse effects. So he, over here we have this Nerf gun over here. The Nerf gun is going to remind us of the nephrotoxicity. And it's shooting out a nerve that's being blocked, which reminds us of the neuromuscular blockade. There's also this ear here that's exploding, which reminds us of the ototoxicity, especially with loop diuretics. And then the tarantula that's there to remind us that the immunoglycosides are teratogenic and therefore are contraindicated in pregnancy due to the damage to cranial nerve 8. Okay, just to make this scene more complete, let's just talk about mechanism of resistance of the aminoglycosides. So certain bacteria have transferase enzymes which can inactivate the drug. This is through acetylation, phosphorylation, or adenylation. These forms of enzyme modification can lead to aminoglycoside resistance, and therefore aminoglycosides will be ineffective. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the aminoglycosides. Stay tuned for our next video in pharmacology.